the ice Canal wide open with the spring Canal boat people laugh and sing Wake up, canal boys, wake Wake up, canal boys, wake Pull off your coats and load the boats Get ready to start in the morning Hi ho, steer and haul our boats up and down that long canal Hi ho, steer and haul our boats up and down that long canal Oh, when we all get into port The gals all love the squeezing port We pass around the whiskey cup And we all break down till the night breaks up the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal was completed in 1850, after 25 years in the making. It followed the Potomac River 185 miles from Cumberland, Maryland to Washington, D.C. The vision of its builders was to create a waterway from the Chesapeake Bay to the Ohio River. Had the vision been realized, the water route would have encircled the eastern half of the nation via the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. The canal operated nearly 100 years, but the vision was never realized. It was the victim of nature and the development of the railroads. By the time the canal opened, it was already obsolete. What remains today is a wonderful 185 mile long National Historic Park, the C&O Hiker Biker Towpath. Years ago, I biked the 185 miles several times. This year, I revisited the area to bike the path again with my family. In making this slideshow, I found a 90-year-old silent movie made by Thomas Edison's movie company, Conquest Pictures, of life on the Panat Canal. It was shot in 1917 nearly 70 years after the canal opened and about seven years before it closed in 1924. In the canal's heyday, the, the 1870s, 400 cargo-laden boats plied its waters along with the 2,000 mules that provided the power to move them. Operators experimented with steam power but steam was not economical and the wakes caused by the faster moving boats damaged the canal. The advancement of the railroads and the occasional flooding of the Potomac River caused the decline of the canal. By 1917 only about 60 boats remained hauling coal for Washington DC homes. In this slideshow you'll see what the operating canal looked like in 1917 and what it looks like today 90 years later wake up, canal boys, wake. Pull off your coats we started the ride in Cumberland Maryland just as Edison's movie company did in 1917 but unlike the movie makers we spent the night in a Holiday Inn the canal is now over 180 years old but today the National Park Service maintains the towpath along with many interesting old canal features. It is the only national park 185 miles long and about 100 yards wide. The towpath is well maintained and offers a smooth trail for hikers and bikers. While surveying through these mountains, George Washington conceived the idea of building this canal and he founded and became the first president of the Tomic Canal Company. We start with the canal at the coal city of Cumberland, Maryland. The many artistic old locks are tended by veterans of the Civil War. Music 
On to Washington, we pass through 86 locks and are dropped 800 feet in transit. Thomas Edison invented the motion picture camera and projector over the period of 10 years from 1883 to 1893. He tried to make commercial movies, but was never very successful at making money. This 1917 three-reel short subject was one of his last productions. The Papa Tunnel is 30 miles from Cumberland. It is one of the most interesting features on the ride. The tunnel it was carved into hard rock before the invention of dynamite. It took 14 years to complete and was hailed as a great engineering accomplishment at the time. Today it looks very much like it did in 1850 when it was opened to canal traffic and in 1917 when the movie was made. There are no lights in the tunnel and it is very dark inside. Hikers and bikers are urged to use a flashlight when going through the tunnel. I asked her for to step on board and down she waddled at the word. As she was a stepping in, a snapper caught her by the shin. Wake up, canal boys, wake. Wake up, canal boys, wake. Pull off your coats. And... Hey! hey! He's dark, very dark. Hi-ho, steer and haul our boats up and down that long canal. The boat pulled on, she pulled off, and then she died of the snapper turtle cough. But off that snapper. Head I cut some banjo strings made of his toes. Wake up, canal boys, wake, wake up. For serious hiker-biker campers, the 185-mile path has many campsites spaced about five miles apart. Many have the canal on one side and the Potomac River on the other. Each site is complete with water, toilet facilities, campfire, and tent sites. The canal has 86 locks. These lowered the loaded boats 800 feet down to Washington, D.C. They were all mechanical. The canal was never to have electric power, but it did get telephone communications in 1884. The locks were tended 24 hours a day, seven days a week, during the March through November season. The canal was closed during the winter. Only one boat could fit in a lock at a time. The average speed of a loaded boat pulled by two mules was two to three miles an hour. A round trip on the canal's 185 miles took from seven to ten days, man and mule walking every mile. A normal day on the canal was 18 hours. Crews stopped for rest at night. Every mile on the towpath is described in this guide. Many historical events involved the canal. 
including John Brown's raid on the U.S. Armory at Harper's Ferry in 1859. Robert E. Lee's Confederate Army crossed the canal four times, the last time as he retreated from Gettysburg in 1863. Quiet old Maryland farms stocked with waterfowl stretched their acres down to the waterfront. All canal boats were built just for the canal. They were 14 and a half feet wide and 95 feet long. They just fit into the canal locks. They were usually operated by the boat's owner and his family. Most family members lived on the boat, including women and children. Many babies were born on the boats in the nearly 100 years of the canal's operation. In 1920, a study of the canal operation by the U.S. Department of Labor found that most boat owners were poorly educated and had been family operated for several generations. They also found children as young as five years old spending 10 to 12 hours a day riding or walking beside the mules towing the boats. The railroad has replaced the canal as a freight carrier, but the waterway is still doing its bit, carrying the coal to Washington. The canal builders built aqueducts or water bridges to cross the many creeks and rivers flowing into the Potomac. This one still exists in Williamsport, Maryland, which is the halfway point on the canal. In several locations, the locks and the keeper's house have been rebuilt to show how they were many years ago. Lock tenders lived next to the locks. They were on call 24-7. The pay was $125 a year and included free housing and a chance to sell supplies to boat crews. Many keepers maintained a large garden on canal property next to the lock. Builders built five dams on the Potomac to control the water in the canal. Today, only two dams remain. This is Dam 4, a great place for a cool swim on a hot day. After biking many miles, a place to stop for lunch and a cold drink is a welcome sight. Where are you going? Where are you going, Katie? Ferry. Where are you going, Nance? Our first ferry. Through the rain and fog, his thoughts so nice at the salty dawn. Hey, 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 locker room. Oh, hey, hey. The last.
last 60 miles of the towpath takes the biker hiker into the heart of Georgetown, outside of Washington, D.C. On the CNO Canal Line. By the rail from the very start His boat still lives in the people's heart We've a debt to pay and a promise to keep To save his way From an endless sleep Hey, 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 lock ready Oh, hey Well, the words like the lockhouse covered with time Live on for us in an old man's mind Never no more On the CNO Canal Line 